Jade Chamber. Hmm. Uh. Uh. This is bad. Paimon's supposed to be your guide, but Paimon doesn't know where the way up to the Jade Chamber is. Ah. <sighs> Well, since we want to go to the Jade Chamber, heading to its location on the map is the sensible thing to do. Let's look around. There has to be a way up there nearby. Thingy. Since this is the right place, it must have something to do with the Jade Chamber. No way! Just trust Baimon's instincts. trespasses on these hallowed grounds. Exactly. What are you talking about? We're invited guests. What makes you think you can treat us like this? No. Wait. Maybe this was Ningwan's plan all along. She pretended to invite us to the Jade Chamber, but set up a Melolith ambush here to arrest us. Uh, now Paimon's mad! You! Over there! This is a trick, isn't it? How shameless! What? We're just on guard duty. What do you mean, shameless? What nonsense! Seize these suspicious intruders at once! Well, here they come! Line them up and knock them down! Disappear! Wind blade! Lightning terrified! Let it roll! With the wind! Wind blade! Attack! Who goes there? Attack! By sight! 
Stop! What's all this about? Lady Kuching, these two strange people suddenly appeared. They seem to have designs on the Guizhong Ballista. Who are you calling strange? Hmm? You want to go to the Jade Chamber? Who are you? We're invited guests here to look for the Lyra Qixing. Who are you? <laughs> well, as it happens, I am one of the Liyue Qixing. Oh! I'm Kuching, the Yuhung of the Qixing. I know of you, Traveler. You're Ningguang's guests, yes? Didn't expect to meet you here in the mountains. Wow. Paimon didn't think we'd meet some super rich big shot out here in the middle of nowhere either. The Guizhong Ballista in Tianhong Pass has long been in disrepair. And yet, it was fixed in a single night. I came here to investigate that occurrence. These Millilith are just here to guard the scene, not to arrest anyone. So, this was all a misunderstanding? Paimon never would have thought. Anyway, for a mortal to be able to repair an Adepti mechanism is quite the mystery, even to the Chising. <sighs> that was... Eh? Oh, right. So, Lady Yuhang, might you have any idea why Lady Tianquan invited us to go to the Jade Chamber? Just call me Kuching. I'd say that Ningguang's purpose is to request that the savior of Mondstadt take a more neutral stance. Or at least, to not wholly side with the Adepti. We're not taking sides. We spoke with the Adepti. They want to protect Liu as well. When you say protect, you're referring to their sanctimonious arrogance, aren't you? Huh? You are mortals and thus under their protection. There was no way they would have regarded you as someone with the ability to assassinate a god. Naturally, they would also regard Ningguang's locking down the area, questioning the citizenry, and pursuit of the assassin to be pointless work. Perhaps they even wonder if there might be a cover-up. I'll say it like it is. They're underestimating us. Well, you've got a point there. Still, this is the first time Paimon's seen a person from Liyue who doesn't respect the gods or the Adepti. <laughs> Should I respect the shallow sense of time and condescension to mortals that has caused them to delay in moving against us, Chising? Forget it. I shouldn't speak of them this way. This skepticism is mine alone, and Ningguang does not share it. Either way... I will admit that the actions of the Adepti this time were quite restrained. Rex Lapis's death is indeed an extraordinary circumstance. But to think that they would call for a council of Adepti rather than come down here directly. How surprisingly civilized of them. Well, for Ningguang, she would talk anything and everything out if she could. But I doubt we can do that here. The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? <sighs> Another super bold statement! <sighs> I'll stop here. Honestly, I hadn't intended to say so much. But you're a good listener, Traveler. You should both be off to the Jade Chamber. Don't be late now. Ningguang's schedule is packed to the gills all the way till next year. The cream of Liyue's mercantile crop all see ascending to the Jade Chamber is the greatest honor. Each brings rich gifts as they visit, all to curry a little favor with Ningguang. Favor? But, but, wait! That's right! Greeting gifts are a staple of Liyue's culture! We need to get one! Not to curry favor or anything, just to... Respect Liu's culture! Alright, alright. You can decide on your greeting gift yourselves. 
Let me tell you how to get to the Jade Chamber first. You didn't actually have to come to Mount Tianhong. Go back to Liyue Harbor. Find a guide at the Yuahai Pavilion, and... Well then, may we meet again, Traveler? Well, that Yuhung may not respect the gods, but Paimon thinks she's a pretty cool person. So, what should we give to Ningguang when we see her? Oh, right! Paimon dreamed of an amazing snack last night! Sugar frosted slime! Paimon has a feeling that it would be perfect for a super rich person like Ningguang. Why don't we go with that for a gift? With a certain boom shakalaka, of course! Let's go gather ingredients! Time waits for no one, and neither will our riches. Ooh, look at that slime! It looks crystal clear! And very delicious! That's the one! No one's mad! I'll settle this! Let it rain! in the air. Huh? Did you hear that? Uh, no! That was definitely someone in trouble. It came from those ruins over there. Uh-oh. It looks like the treasure orders have locked someone inside. <sighs> Thank you for your help, kind travelers. If you hadn't come to my aid, I surely would have rotted in this cell. Those treasure hoarders. When their mood was good, they'd rearrange those pots of sweet flowers. When they were in a bad mood, they'd rearrange my face. Aw, it was nothing. No need to thank us all at once or anything. <laughs> I understand. Don't worry, I will compensate you both. Don't say that. I only escaped this predicament because of you. I'm Meng Dan, a supplier for Mingxing Jewelry in Liyue Harbor. I often walk around these mountains in search of antiques. I never expected that those treasure hoarders would have their eyes on the same ruins that I had. Before I knew it, they'd caught and imprisoned me. Is there anything that you lack? Uh, antiques, treasure, various knickknacks, you name it. Well, as long as you want what I have to offer, of course. Wait a moment. Actually, we are looking for something. Oh? And what might that be? Do you have a box that can store presents? We'd like a pretty one. The kind that you can use to store snacks. Of course we do. How can one sell antiques without gift boxes? At Mingxing Jewelry, we have the best gift wrapping service in the Seven Nations. Now just give me a moment, and I'll let the boss know. You can go see her whenever you require that box. Great! Paimon 
Sugar Frosted Slime now comes in a beautiful package. from your store. Uncle Mung already told me about it. Thank you both for saving him. Many of the best goods in our store were found by Uncle Mung. If anything were to happen to him, it would be impossible for us to continue doing business. Here, this container is itself an antique with at least 140 years of history. It's already been cleaned. Will it do? Yep, yep, yep. It's great. Hang on a moment. Can we borrow one other thing? Sure. Please help yourselves. As long as it's on our shelves. Traveler, this clay pot looks really awesome. If we use an antique as our mixing bowl, we should be able to make a great snack. It's done! The one and only sugar-frosted slime! Carefully now. Into the box it goes, and dust it over with a bit more powdered sugar. Oh yes, you might want to use these two freshly picked flowers as decorations too. Woohoo! It looks beautiful! Great! Now that we've put all that we've got into this box, let's go to the Jade Chamber to see Mingguang. Thanks for saving Uncle Mung. Please take care. Well now, time to clean that pot. According to Ku Ching, this is what we should say. Excuse me, do you sell the moon here? Yes. How many would you like? It's not convenient to speak of numbers here. Ah, well said. Please, use this to ascend to the chamber. Ah, uh, yes, speaking of which... Are you two the guests that Lady Ningguang has arranged to meet with today? Yep. And yet the code they used was not the one for guests, but for the Yuhang. What's going on here? I've been waiting for you, returnee from Joyen Karst. <gasps> it's Ningguang! Since this is our first meeting, um, we've prepared a gift. I hope you like it. Oh, for me. You have my thanks. It seems that I have made things difficult for you, considering that you were supposed to be my guests. <laughs> oh no, it's nothing. This palace floats in the skies, higher than the peak of any mountain. From this vantage point, one may survey all of Liyue. I have been gathering the funds necessary to build it from the time I began learning the merchant's craft. And since becoming the Tianjuan, I have spared no effort in hiring the best craftsmen to constantly extend it. At first, it was but the size of one room. Now, it is large enough to blot out the moon in the skies above Liyue. One day, I believe it will overshadow all seven nations. Not many from outside Liyue earn the right to ascend the Jade Chamber. 
But I have been in correspondence with the acting Grandmaster of the Knights of Favonius, who spoke highly of you. As such, I have been putting eyes and ears out ever since you reached Liyue. What? And I finally got wind of your movements when you were on the way to Wangshu Inn. Uh, wait! Was Ver Goldet one of your people? <laughs> Just Ver Goldet? Everyone at Wangshu Inn is one of ours. <gasps> hmm. At the Guizhang Ballista, yes? Uh, you weren't peeking on us from the skies the whole time, were you? <laughs> I fear that peeking would have been a little difficult from this altitude. Our eyes and ears are more than sufficient. You two are very interesting people, after all. It would be natural to take an interest. Well, I wouldn't expect you to trust us, considering that you have had far more interactions with the Adepti. The reason I invited you here was to clear up some misunderstandings. I believe that you've heard of the Archon War. Many gods used to walk this earth, and many long wars were fought between them that did not abate until 2,000 years ago. Much blood was shed, and many lives were lost. In the end, only seven victors remained standing in Tevat. They built cities and nations on the corpses of the vanquished, and thus began the era of the Seven. You can see Goyun Stone Forest from here, I trust. It is no natural rock formation. Those are giant spears of rock hurled by Rex Lapis during the war. Beneath the spears lie those cast down by Rex Lapis in those days, gods that failed to seize the title of Archon. Not only is it true that gods may die, but so too has the membership of the Seven changed over the last two millennia. Rex Lapis's passing is an unimaginable disaster for Liyue, but the Order of the Seven will not collapse simply because of that. Another Lord of Geo will arise sooner or later. Yet, how are we to forget Rex Lapis? When that time comes, the relationship between the people of Liyue and the gods and Adepti will surely be different from before. Even in a new era, the Liyue Qixing remain Rex Lapis's former subjects. Do you really think us capable of having played a part in his demise? Of lacking the foresight to see the certain repercussions? <laughs> that day at Yujing Terrace, it was also very sudden. Even I was caught completely off guard. You were there, you no doubt saw. But our enemy has long lain hidden within the harbor. If we do not act against them now, they will surely gain the upper hand. Hiding the Exuvia was a necessary maneuver to take the initiative back, to play the spider while our foes scurry about. Who's this enemy you're talking about? What do you think, Traveler? talking about well answered uh, uh -huh. <sighs> the scenery out here is fine indeed but the wind is a little strong our preparations to receive guests within are complete so please this way Mm. 
Be at ease, you two. Make yourselves at home if you wish. Can we really? I have invited you two here as friends. And when friends come over to play, our enjoyment comes first. Naturally. Oh, isn't this that legendary wall? Why, you've kept your ear to the ground, I see. That's because even the storytellers are talking about it. Everyone's after a piece of paper from that wall. It's super famous. That's because that wall records Leo's secrets. Merchants have always been attracted to secrets. But the secrets of the mercantile world are of no interest to you, are they, Traveler? You're rather special, really, and I think you're quite aware of that. If possible, I'd like to have your trust. But if you were to choose the more trustworthy person between myself and Kuching... <laughs> You'd pick Kuching? Nah, I originally thought her a bit too... hard-headed. With someone of her character on the Chising, I've had some extra messes to clean up behind the scenes. But after she said those words, the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Chising don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? Well, I must say that quite a few of my doubts have been dispelled. I won't deny that Rex Lapis's passing seems advantageous to us. But, for Liyue's sake, we cannot allow ourselves to be shackled by rumors of our usurpation of power. Indeed. It seems that you understood what I meant to say from the very beginning. I called for the gag order and for the Exuvia to be hidden to temporarily stabilize the situation, and also to prevent something similar to the incident in Mondstadt. With Rex Lapis's death, the Fatui have busied themselves with many clandestine actions beyond their diplomatic remit. As the Tianchuan, one responsible for Liyue, I cannot be too concerned with appearances when opposing them. Allowing the rite of parting to take place was also meant to buy some time for us to take control of Liyue's administration. <sighs> it's exactly as Zhongli said. The Qixing only provided the venue for the rite so they could use us for their own ends. Wait, that's right. Speaking of ends, could I say one other thing? Of course. Byman's heard that anyone who sends a greeting gift gets a little something in return. So, does that include us? <laughs> it's all right. I like direct people. Well, we have made quite a bit of trouble for you recently. How about this? You can pick any one object here as you please, and you may take it with you. Yay! Paima was just waiting for you to say that! Let's see, what should we get? <gasps> one of the sheets on that wall! Don't look at Paimon like that! One of these sheets of paper will sell for crazy prices, even if it's only as large as Paimon's fingernail! Just imagine, how much more a whole untorn sheet would sell for! Let's grab one! The biggest one! Huh? Well, that was an easy search. The biggest sheet is right up there in the most obvious spot. Let's go with that one! La 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 la! Let's see what's written on it. Huh? There's a place marked with a circle on here. <gasps> oh, could it be treasure? Whatever it is, it better make us filthy rich. Let's see what's written over here. Sigil of permission, something, something, fatui, research, copy. Huh? Aw, oh, that doesn't sound like treasure at all. <gasps> This piece of paper shows that a chasing spy discovered traces of classified Fatui research on the sigil of permission. Oh, Ningguang did say that the Fatui have been up to all kinds of mischief in the shadows of Liyue. Spreading rumors, wanting to get their hands on the Archon's body and whatnot. 
But research on the sigil of permission? Paimon wonders what they're up to. Speaking of which, there's also some connection between you and the sigil of permission. Seems there's still more for us to find out. Oh, you really think so? Well, should we not go then? Oh, so you're saying that it's precisely because we can't completely trust Ningguang that we should confirm the truth of what she says for ourselves. Hmm. That's way out of Paimon's league. Paimon thinks she's been nothing but good to us. Mm, anyway, we'll see if you're onto something. Um, before we look for Zhongli at Dihua Marsh, let's go to the place marked out on these papers and see if the Fatui really are up to no good there. So, have you made your choice? You don't have to confirm it with me. Just choose one and take it. Afterwards, why not sit down for a while in the Jade Chamber? Or have a short stroll? Rest is also an integral part of any journey. Come now. There's no need to stand on ceremony. Loosen up a little. So, you don't have... Afterwards, why not... All right, then. I hope the next time we meet, you will either have already done the right thing, or will be about to make the right call. Put you on high heat. <laughs> Let's move. Before? But where? Oh, Paimon knows! It looks just like the sigil of permission! 
permission the child gave you. Hmm, but how did a relic of the adept die end up in the hands of someone like child? Suspicious. Oh, that's right. Cloud Retainer said that when the Lord of Geo created the Sigil of Permission, it wasn't to be used as some old relic. Talismans like that were once used in the Archon War to channel divine powers. Maybe the Fatui are copying the Sigil of Permission in hopes of achieving a similar effect. Being able to channel divine power in battle? Whew, that sounds pretty dangerous. And the plot thickens. We'll need to keep an eye on child, that's for sure. Hmm, alright, that's enough sticking around here. We gotta go meet up with Zhang Li soon. The last stop on our right of parting preparations tour is Dihua Marsh. Let's go, Paimon hates being late. Right on time. I myself only arrived moments ago. Did you enjoy your visit to the Jade Chamber? It was so big and pretty and expensive. Paimon's never seen such a fancy schmancy place before. Indeed. It's second to none in all of Liyue. Then you met with Ningguang, I trust? What did you talk about with her? She's super rich and so generous. Oh, Paimon thinks she's very friendly. Yeah, his take on Ningguang is quite different from Paimon's. He thinks that even the tactless Yuhang is more trustworthy than her. Oh. So you also met with Kuching then? What did she have to say? She said, the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? <laughs> no respect for the Divine. Indeed, contrary to the Everbold Kuching, Ningguang is more of a businesswoman at heart though they are both members of the Qixing. Although she's friendly, there's no way of clearly discerning her true intentions. Yes, she has only relied on herself to rise to her current position. No ordinary person could ever achieve that. It's said that she's the one behind the constant expansion of the Jade Chamber. It's the second most important thing to her. Even if she ever gave up the position of Tian Xuan, she would never give up the Jade Chamber. The Jade Chamber is only second? What's the most important thing to her, then? Why, Mora, of course. All Ningguang talked about was the Fatui this and the Fatui that. She said that after Rex Lapis was murdered, the Fatui have constantly been trying to sink their fingers into Liyue, and that they aren't to be trusted. That is how the Fatui have always been. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Hmm. No matter what they may be planning, you must be careful when dealing with the Fatui. Always be on your guard. So, is there anything we need to get for the Rite of Parting in Diwa Marsh? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Today, we'll be gathering wild glaze lilies. Glaze lilies? But why did we come all the way out here? Doesn't the garden in Yujing Terrace have some? Even Qingsa Village has glaze lilies. Oh, right! Paimon remembers that Madam Ping is always tending to flowers. Maybe we could ask her. No. Those lilies have all been gardened by people. They won't do at all. Dihua Marsh used to be full of glaze lilies. It is a sort of joyful flower that listens to human song. Before the Archon War, Dihua Marsh was all dry land and fertile soil. But the war caused landslides, and the land was flooded, 
turning it into the marsh you see now. Nearly all the glazed lilies were wiped out. Of course, there are some kinds of flowers that have been preserved and gardened by people in the city. But very few people know that glazed lilies may still be found in the wild. Wild glazed lilies have the strongest fragrance. If we want to follow the true tradition of the rite of parting, we must grind up the wild lilies and place the powder in a censer of everlasting incense. But I'll need your assistance in gathering these flowers. No, I need you to sing to them. Singing to the flowers will make them more fragrant. Ah! So how good is your singing? Really? Why doesn't Paimon believe you? We'll only know once he starts singing. Whenever you're ready. Da 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 da. What happened? These flowers are jumping. They look really angry. Is it because you sang a song for Monstad that they don't understand here, Leo? Those weren't glaze lilies. Glaze lilies wouldn't hit people. This little monster is known as a whopper flower. Hmm. Strange. These petals look interesting. The glaze lilies used as a disguise were buried with the whopper flower for too long. The result seems to have surprisingly potent medicinal value. Let's collect what we can of these petals. Nice and all, but will those petals be useful for the rite of parting? Unfortunately, no. Ugh, that's so lame. Excuse me. Are you searching for glaze lilies? Oh, hey, it's... What's your face? Uh... Hello, traveler. I'm surprised you still remember my name. That reminds me, how was your visit to the Jade Chamber? Well, it sure would have been better if you told us how to get up there. Didn't I tell you the way? Surely I did. Nope, we found the way on our own. Oh, I see. Uh-oh, I guess I really did forget to tell them. Huh, something seems a little off about Ganyu. She's acting different from the first time we met. Where's her serious attitude now? Ah, oh, well, I met you at that time as an emissary of the Tianquan. But now, I am simply out on a stroll to see the flowers. You came all the way out here to see the flowers? Why not just enjoy the gardens of the city? <sighs> Yujing Terrace is where Rex Lapis parted from this world. If I strolled through those lonely gardens now, I wouldn't be able to bear it. Whenever my duties take me near Yujing Terrace these days, I draw the windows to block my view of the gardens. Oh, sorry. We shouldn't have brought it up. No, it's quite all right. I just haven't processed my emotions yet. When the Archon War came to its end 2,000 years ago, the first iteration of the Seven would gather in Liyue and drink with Rex Lapis. But five of those original seven had already passed before Rex Lapis. It's truly a changing of the guard. Yes. Now that the spirit of Rex Lapis has returned to the heavens, only Barbados of Mondstadt remains of the first seven. The other five, including Inazuma's Raiden Shogun, are no longer the same friends from 2,000 years ago. Of the current seven Archons, the youngest is Sumeru's god of Dendro. She is merely 500 years old, whereas Rex Lapis was more than 6,000 years old at the time of his passing. 
This means that Liyue had been under Rex Lapis's rule from the moment it was first founded 3,700 years ago. The city has never had to bid farewell to its deity. So what do you think of this... farewell? Huh? This... This is a little sudden. I... As a mortal, I've never dared to imagine a Liyue without Rex Lapis. But as an adeptus, I think I will eventually come to grips with re come to grips with reality. Since Rex Lapis has passed, the time of Liyue's contract with the gods and adepti has now reached its end. Huh? Did you just say as an adeptus? Yes, I. I am a mix of human and Chilean. Adeptus blood flows through my veins. I fought for Rex Lapis and the city of Liyue during the Archon War. After the war ended, I signed a contract with Rex Lapis and took the position as secretary for the Chising. I've continued those duties to this very day. Well, uh, let's save that conversation for another day. You say that you are here looking for glaze lilies? I also know where wild glaze lilies can be found. See, I've just picked one myself. Here, you may have it if you wish. <laughs> we dare not refuse it. Oh, so did you sing a song before you picked the lily? Indeed, I did. I know this tradition well. In fact, I sang a local Liyue ballad to it. Wow, so you really know your stuff, T- No, it is you who I should be thanking. If not for this chance meeting, I never thought that I would be able to contribute to the upcoming farewell for our ancient lord. If you would excuse me, I should return to my work now. Good luck. And that just about does it. Our preparations for the rite of parting are mostly finished. Given the ease of picking glaze lilies, I think this was a fitting end to our tasks, in more ways than... Yeah, Paimon can already imagine him starting a business in Liyue. I've had enough ventures in my life already. Beginning a new undertaking is always difficult at first, and requires no small amount of effort. And once business is at full steam, the stress of it all only wears away at you over time. So you must be careful to take the time to step back and re-examine yourself. If left unchecked, the wear and tear on your heart may go well past mending. Wow. See? Jolly sounds like he's already seen it all. Alright, I think it's about time we head back to Leo at Harbor now. This atmosphere is highly abnormal. It seems as though something big has happened. We should ask her. Ah, you're the consultant to Wongsheng Funeral Parlor. Mr. Zhongli, I presume. The Millilith are watching our every move now. These are desperate times. We mustn't act rashly. Desperate times? The Adepti of Joyun Karst are finally on the move. Do they intend to exercise force? Most likely. I've heard that some members of the Qixing have already gone to meet them. Well, I say meet, but it's more like they're attempting to stall the Adepti outside the city. However, both sides were quite obstinate and hit an impasse. It seems inevitable, given the current situation. The Adepti do not acknowledge the Qixing. They only acknowledge the contracts of the Geo Archon. If the two sides come to blows, Liyue Harbor will be in no position to stop them. Surely the Liyue Chising are not the sort to give in so easily. <laughs> Their boneheadedness is known throughout the lands. 
Yet it's because of that obstinacy that mortals and Adepti are now on the verge of conflict. And what now? How is it that the Fatui have come under fire? Ah, that's all Ningguang's doing. She proclaimed that in these tumultuous times, the Millilith must rein in the actions of the Fatui. Only now do they want to start keeping tabs on us? <laughs> That's the Qixing for you. Anyway, Mr. Zhongli, you're one of Child's close associates. Please understand that your actions will reflect on us. Don't let anyone catch you off guard. It looks like things are about to boil over in Liyue Harbor. Do you intend to use your neutral identity as an intermediary between both sides? Or will you use your sword to turn the balance? Neither path is an easy one. Oh, by the way, Mr. Zhongli, we've heard that the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor has also been caught up in all of this. They're currently squaring off with the authorities at the gates. Things are taking a turn for the worse. I'm afraid I must leave now to handle things back at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. I hope that Master Hu has been able to keep things under control for the moment. Consider your next course of action carefully, Traveler. If you're trying to prevent an explosion, it may be wisest to look for the fuse first. <sighs> Having connections with the Fatui seems to be quite the double-edged sword. So what does Zhongli mean by looking for the fuse? Oh, Paimon gets it! If there's anyone that wants to see the whole city turned upside down, it's definitely him! He must be waiting for the moment when no one is watching to do something really bad! But where could we find him now? Where would he go at a time like this? The Liyue Chising. To think that they'd go for us Fatui the first chance they got. Once the Adepti send the Qixing packing, we'll just set up foreign relations with them instead. Impressive enough from the outside, but who would have guessed that it was even fancier on the inside? And so full of Mora! This is where all of Tavat's Mora is minted, right? In that case, maybe they won't notice if a few Mora go missing. Oh, so it's a trap! Tricky, tricky. Good thing Paimon's got you here. But even if we can't take any, we can still have a closer look, right? Or better yet, take a nap on top of a mountain of Mora! It's like a dream come true! Oh, right! Back to business. It's quiet. Too quiet. Surely someone's gotta be guarding something as important as the Exuvia. Huh? Look! What happened here? Uh-oh! Paimon smells trouble! Quick! We have to go make sure that the Exuvia is alright! You've already fulfilled your task as guides, so why do you still linger here? Haven't you already seen enough trouble for today? Huh? Who's there? 
<sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. But now, you're nothing but dross, and you're in my way. <laughs> Although I'm deeply grateful to you that I was able to effortlessly find this secret location, don't you think that trying to stop me now would just be wasted effort? <laughs> Stopping the more immense, hiding away the Exuvia. <laughs> the Chising are really pulling out all the stops this time. So you've been planning to take the Gnosis from inside the Exuvia all along? <laughs> As one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers, it's my duty to see the will of the Tsaritsa fulfilled. She will get that which she desires. <laughs> I'm not asking for your blessing, and there's nothing you can do to stop me anyway. The time for discussion and diplomacy has already passed. I mean, if it were up to me, I would have skipped that stage to begin with. But I'm willing to do as the Tsaritsa deems fit. Either way, we now come to my favorite part. A simple pleasure, and one that I am oh so delighted to be sharing with you. The battle. Battle? So you're the type that goes looking for trouble, huh? <laughs> you could say that. <sighs> when Signora offended the deities outside the cathedral in Mondstadt, she swiftly left the scene once her mission was accomplished. Instead of confronting you directly, she chose to rely on the snow and ice to make her escape. She wouldn't want the knights to come running towards the sound of battle now, would she? When she faces a worthy opponent, she will prioritize her mission, weigh the outcomes, and consider the consequences of her actions. But as for me, the greatest pleasure of being a harbinger lies in crossing blades with strong opponents. We won't let what happened in Monster ever happen again! Oh, so you intend to fight me? Good. I won't kill you, Traveler. I'll just play along, to feel the thrill of battle. Besides, you could never defeat me, not even in your wildest dreams. But hey, try to relish the fight anyway, because if you ask me, without that, what else is there? <laughs> Fighting talk, I love it! Now let's see you live up to it. This chance is hard to come by, so show me all you've got! So very few ever get the chance to square off with a Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint! You've made some progress. Dissipate! Cowering already? Maybe. No wonder Senora was so wary of you. Well, that just means I can go all out. Brace yourself. This is about to get tough. Now, show me what you can do against the might of a harbinger. Not bad. Your swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. You were just playing. 
Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide-eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected! <laughs> well then, I'll be taking Morax's gnosis now! <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You... You beat me to it, didn't you? <laughs> Cool off. It seems the burden of the foul legacy transformation was too great for my body. I lacked the opportunity to think this through. And now that I consider the matter more carefully, you never had any chance of beating me to the Gnosis. You had no connection to the Gnosis, no matter where it had been taken. That's what we've been trying to tell you! We didn't take it! Your show of ability today far surpasses that of Senora's initial assessment of you and Mondstadt. Tell me, how could that be? You already know the answer, don't you? I can see it in your eyes. But if that is a secret you wish to keep, I guess I'll just have to curb my curiosity. This battle has already left me satisfied. Anyone who strives as I do to grow stronger shall be called a friend. Even if our friendship can only be shown in battle against one another. Pretty sure that's not the normal way to make friends. Unfortunately, I must bring this amiable conversation to an end. My quest still beckons. Given that the Gnosis wasn't taken by anyone, then we must look once again to the beginning. Perhaps it was never in the Exuvia to begin with. In fact, it might be that the Exuvia was just a diversion of sorts. What? So you mean that... Yes, it appears so. Interesting to say the least. It seems that the guardian deity of the capital of commerce is also well versed in little maneuvers beyond the boundaries of contracts. As such, we must now look to our backup plan. Backup plan? I had hoped it would never come to this, for the weak will be swept away in the process. The truth is, the world belongs to those who pursue strength. I seldom willingly involve myself with the weak. Unfortunately, we cannot be picky about our methods as Fatui Harbingers. Children must all learn to eat their vegetables sometime. So what are you planning to do? I will awaken the god that lies dormant beneath Guyan's stone forest. A god? Osile, overlord of the Vortex, who was defeated by Morax, the GR Archon in the Archon War. 
and who has remained pinned beneath the waves by the Geo Archon's stone spears ever since. If such an ancient god would be unleashed upon Liu Harbor, defenseless without the protection of its deity, do you think the cunning Rex Lapis would just stand aloof and watch the ensuing destruction? But the Archon War ended 2,000 years ago! How can an ancient god appear in a world now overseen by the Seven? Simple. I've already prepared the means to awaken it. Hey! Those are sigils of permission! Oh, Paimon remembers now! The Fatui have been researching them! Indeed. The one that was given to you was just a byproduct of our research. With the power of so many sigils of permission concentrated in one place, along with that which was bestowed upon me as a harbinger by our Tsaritsa, breaking the subduing might of the Geo Archon Spears for a time should be no obstacle. Using the powers of ancient gods in such a situation fails to interest me, and is largely against my principles. But knowing that such an action will not only force the Geo Archon to show its hand, but you as well, that makes matters a little more intriguing. <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Lyra, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. Huh? He's... he's already gone! That guy is fast! Uh, what's going on? 